Our first reading for today is from Genesis, the 50th chapter, verses 15 to 21. When Joseph's brothers saw their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them, and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of our Lord. A further reading from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed, he has made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and generous, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. <clears throat> For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. This is the word of the Lord. Then from Romans, the 14th chapter, we hear these words. <clears throat> Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. And he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, 
Why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. As it is written, Surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to the Lord. So far, the word of our Lord, and then from Matthew, the 18th chapter. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. I'm supposed to say, and this is the gospel of the Lord. This is the law of the Lord. Amen. And the scripture readings. We just heard from Matthew, the landowner, the boss, say, Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you just envious because I'm generous? Now, I don't know about the rest of you. I've heard that scripture and I've heard this parable misused. I had a boss one time tell me that he was going to pay somebody else more for less work because he's the boss. He can do that. What was wrong with me, it says so right in the Bible he can do that. Well, a couple of things were wrong with it. One is while he was my boss, he wasn't the landowner. He didn't own the job. And if he had been the landowner, is this parable about earthly things? No, it's not. This is not about how, when you get to be boss, you can treat the employees any way you want to, push and shove them and be unfair and unequal. It's not about how 
you could hire a man and pay him more than you hire a woman. That scripture's been used exactly for that. Have you ever heard that when you were employed, Dorothy? Sure you have. I pay him more than I pay you because I'm the boss. Nor is it applicable the other way around. I pay the women more than I pay for equal work. He should have an equal pay. In fact, the guy he was going to pay more than me, in fact, the fellow that he did pay more than me, wound up embarrassing him. He uh, had lied. He said he had a degree. <laughs> he didn't. It was all uncovered. And the last I heard, the fellow was selling T-shirts in a mall somewhere in Houston. Uh, but, yeah, the boss used this. It's not the application at all. Who owns all the cattle on 10,000 hills? Who owns everything? The scriptures tell us our Father in Heaven does. Our Father in Heaven owns the whole world by rights because he made it. If you think you own the clothes on your back, think again. God owns the stuff you have. Every bit of it. And he can give you stuff, and he can take stuff. At his pleasure, because it is. But I'm going to tell you, this scripture's not even about stuff even though it was put in the words of a denarius. The workers got a denarius. He's talking about heavenly things. The person who comes to know our Lord late in life, after a life of um, even ungodly things, doesn't have a worse place in heaven than the guy who behaved all of his life or the lady who behaved all of her life who was baptized as a child and lived the perfect little book like you're supposed to live it. There's not a better, higher seat in heaven for those to look down upon the lowly ones who came into the kingdom of heaven later. That's why I so happily said, this is the gospel of the Lord. Our Lord desires to give all of us salvation from death. He desires to give all of us forgiveness of sins. He desires to bring all of us into his kingdom through his blood. Some people turn that away. They're the ones who didn't go to work at all. The ones who weren't even mentioned in this parable. Because their fate is unmentionable. But his desire is to give us all his riches, his glory, his, his paradise. And those who think that they are especially holy and deserving of more aren't going to get more. In truth, the scriptures say that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and that includes Mr. Holy Holy. But you know, it goes more than that. You see, Jesus goes way beyond where my boss was trying to go. He owns everything. He can give us the rewards he wishes to give us, and the reward is release from our sins, relief from death, eternal life with him. But he's got still another job for us, and I guess if you're these fellows who were complaining about getting the same pay as the fellows who only worked an hour, then this job really rankles. He says, all authority under heaven is given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples and baptize them 
and teach them everything I have commanded you. Teach them everything I have taught you, and I will be with you until the end of time. In other words, this is what he's telling, this is the vineyard he's setting you in is to call other people to come and work for the same reward. And they will work an even shorter time than you because you were brought to Christ sooner, and they will get the same reward you will. Now, there's an awesome thought, isn't it? Does that scare you a little bit? Now, there are some people out here who would say that that passage in Matthew 18 was, uh, uh, well, excuse me, 23, was 28, was given to only the pastor type people. Go and be an evangelist and go and baptize. Obviously because, well, only the pastor can baptize, right? No. No. This morning at coffee, we had an experience with that. Uh, I put the creamer on the table. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, fly, creamer, fly. And the balloon creamer didn't fly. Now, I've been ordained, properly ordained, by anybody's idea of proper ordination. I was ordained by somebody whose track record goes all the way back to Peter. Oh, yeah. I've been ordained. The Anglicans would accept my ordination. The Roman Catholic Church has said it would accept my ordination. It's valid. Fly, creamer, fly. Now, you were my witness. Did the creamer fly? No. Huh? No. No? No. It really didn't fly? Not at all. Well, I contend that the Pope couldn't make it fly either. I contend there's no bishop or archbishop or pastor in the world who could have made it fly without taking it in his hands and throwing it. The point being, I have no special powers. I'm not magic. God hasn't given me some special deal. My task, however, is a blessed one, a sacred and holy one, of the public proclamation of the word and the public administration of the sacraments. This means, my friends, when Jesus says, go and make disciples and baptize them, he meant, you go, you make disciples, and you baptize them. In some countries in the world, that's exactly what happens. You're baptized when you're born. The pastor in the hospital, the pastor doesn't baptize you. You're baptized by the staff in the hospital, and that baptism is valid as can be. There's no need for further baptism. You go, you baptize, you teach, you work in the vineyard. That's the task he's called you to do. The task for which he's going to pay you the one denarius is to get other people to come in and find the joys of salvation as well. And the message you have, and you're going to tell me, well, you've been to seminary, you've done all the training, you know what to say, so do you. It's right here in Isaiah 55. We heard it earlier. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen to me, listen to me, and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Now, how am I going to buy when I don't have what to buy with? You can't. The point is, you can't. The point is, is that Christ has already bought it for you. It's yours for free. 
Now, my friend, the Reverend Dugard, <laughs> on YouTube this week, goes into East Texas in the forest and he does a jive chant about the trees and the oil in the ground and the gas in the ground and it's in the ground, why ain't it free? Well, Brother Dugard, it is free. They just charge you for bringing it up and processing it and delivering it to you. It's free. But it does cost you money to get it. It doesn't cost you anything at all for the salvation from our Lord Jesus.